Hello my friends and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. I have an interesting article coming from Associated Press and in a rare admission uh, they tell us that uh, Ukrainians retreat from a Donbass town but it's very interesting to um, look at the semantics Associated Press uses probably taking it from an Ukrainian media outlet the idea is that uh, Ukrainians retreated, but uh, it's very interesting to see um, the article's uh, mental gymnastics uh, at play. That is, they will use certain words that uh, I will try to point those out. And uh, <laughs> it's very interesting. Let, let's uh, get going with this uh, article here coming from Associated Press, as I said, on January 25, 2023. Ukraine forces pull back. Pull back could be uh, used as a retreat or run away. <laughs> anyway, Ukraine forces pull back from Donbass town after onslaught. Ukrainian forces say they have conducted an organized retreat from a town in the eastern region of Donbass, handing the Kremlin's forces a rare but modest battlefield triumph after a series of setbacks in the invasion that began almost 11 months. So from here you can um, look at uh, Ukrainian forces pull back, not retreat, they pull back. Then on the, on the next uh, I don't know, subtitle or first paragraph over there, they say that they conducted an organized retreat, okay, giving the Kremlin forces a rare rare they <laughs> but modest so don't look at it it doesn't really matter triumph after a series of setbacks in the invasion so um, this is what you have to understand out of this uh, first paragraph we go down and it says that Ukrainian forces have conducted an organized retreat remember when the Russians re uh, retreated across organized retreat conducted one um, in October uh, after the Ukrainians uh, uh, counteroffensive and the Russians uh, organized retreat over <clears throat> the Dnipro River. Do you remember how that was reported? They're running away, they're leaving their equipment there, they are uh, scared, they got the whatever. It's just that's the way it was reported by the same guys. Here these guys are just doing orderly because they are our boys. Uh, if you would have read the uh, Russians reports on their retreat, again, the Russians retreated in an orderly manner and blah, 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 blah. That's the way you do, because that's the way you want things to be interpreted by the audience. So you form a certain kind of opinion on whatever is happening over there. So let's get back to this here. And we have uh, uh, this um, little article here continuing like this. So, they uh, conducted an organized retreat from a town in the eastern region of Donbass, an official said Wednesday, in what is a rare but modest battlefield trium triumph for the Kremlin after a series of setbacks in the invasion, blah blah blah. The Ukrainian army retreated from the salt mining town of Soledar. And now, brace yourselves, to preserve the lives of the personnel. Serhi Cherevati, Cherevati, a spokesperson for Ukraine's forces in the East, told the Associated Press. So, they retreated from Soledar. Finally, they um, admit to leaving Soledar, losing there. But the reason is not because they lost or because they couldn't fight anymore or they would have uh, you know, been killed or surrounded, encircled and slaughtered or taken prisoners. No, no, no. Because they wanted to preserve their lives of the personnel. See, that is so uh, empathetic. They are empathetic, unlike the Huns, Russians, uh, who are just, you know, animals. Uh, that's what they say. So in this case, uh, again, they save lives. I heard this before, and that was again in Mariupol. Remember at the beginning of the, uh, not the beginning, I think it was May, June, when uh, the Mariupol uh, was surrounded, the Azovstal, the steel plant, 
and then you had about, over there about 2,500 uh, Ukrainian personnel and uh, they say some uh, civilians. Again, they did not retreat, they came out. They came out and they, uh, they did not surrender, they were not taken prisoners, they just came out uh, and uh, they made a decision, uh, not because they couldn't uh, stay uh, in the catacombs anymore, but they came out to save lives. Well, yeah, well, you could have done that much earlier and do not put everybody through that because they stayed about a month in the catacombs over there, hoping that, I don't know, NATO's a black helicopter will come and get them or submarines or something. And that didn't happen. Uh, and uh, I, we all knew that, but nevertheless, they saved lives. So they give you an empathetic, loving, perfect, beautiful, civilized army here on the other hand. They give you the other one, which is ruthless and animalic. Well, you draw your own conclusions. Now let's go here to the article and see what these guys are telling us. So again, the Ukrainian army retreated from the salt mining uh, just to preserve the lives of the personnel. The soldiers pulled back, you see, they pulled back to previously prepared defensive positions, he said. Prepared uh, since when? 2015? After you signed the second uh, uh, Minsk agreement? Yes, I think so. There was previously prepared defensive positions. That's nice. So you got ready for this for a long time. How did you know? Oh, because the Russians are evil. I got it. Just because they are evil, you already know their next move. Okay, well, thank you for the explanation, Emil. Moscow has, portray has portrayed the Bell for Soledar, which lies near the city of Bakhmut, as they to capturing the entire Donbass. The accomplishment takes the Russian forces a step closer to Bakhmut, but military analysts say capturing Soledar is more symbolic than strategic. Again, there's no big deal. Uh, your successes are, <coughs> our losses are, <coughs> our successes are, and our losses again. You know, uh, your losses, like that. That's how the story goes. Remember, they fought so hard for Soledar, but it's just a symbolic victory. <laughs> Do you believe that? No, I don't believe that at all. I thought that uh, you fought like crazy because it was important. If it's not important, why do you fight for it? And I mean, you don't get engaged in uh, um, useless actions unless you get a benefit out of that, you know, or you're threatened or something. Uh, and besides, I just made a video a minute ago with Wagner groups, Wagner group troops uh, advancing in Bakhmut. So, uh, in, and they are in Bakhmut right now. They're fighting in the neighborhoods once held by the Ukrainians. So they are advancing over there, or how should I put it nicely? So these guys like me more. Uh, they are moving forward, or I don't even know, something mild, you know, use some, uh, this kind of, uh, uh, you know, semantics or anyway. So they are advancing over there, so they're gonna probably take over Bakhmut in the next few days. And then again, the Ukrainian army will just, uh, you know, um, retreat. Oh, how should I put it in an euphemism here? Uh, put back. My bad. But I'm learning. I'm a slow learner, so please bear with me. So uh, it's more strategic, more symbolic. And we have here some uh, little uh, Ukrainian war. So Ukraine's military, which has held out in Soledar against a month slot onslaught of superior Russian forces, has said its fierce defense of the eastern stronghold, stronghold helped tie up Russian forces. Russia claims claimed almost two weeks ago that it had taken Soledar, but Ukraine denied it, denied it. Many of Russia's troops are so around Soledar belong to the private Russian military contractor Wagner Group, and the fighting reportedly has been bloody. Now, let's get to that one. These guys are, these guys, the Ukrainians, the Americans, the free media, are putting down the Wagner Group as being full of ex-convicts and losers and don't know what they're doing. But if those losers and convicts, ex-convicts, they're beating your ass, what are you then? You know what I mean? You. Uh, if you disrespect your enemy and you're losing, you disrespect yourself as well. Because if those losers are beating you and make you pull back and organize retreat or, um, you know what I mean? 
That means you are more of a loser than they are. If someone, a loser, beats you, you know what I mean? Um, that's how the story goes. But these guys are just uh, as they are. Again, um, since its invasion of Ukraine, Moscow has prioritized taking full control of the Donbass. And probably they will. As of now, they are uh, still marching uh, towards west. A region made up of the Donetsk and Luhansk provinces, where it has backed a separatist insurgency since 2014. Why? Why? Because of the illegal overthrow or coup organized by outside uh, countries, by foreign countries, with the help of, uh, you can call them um, traitors, the ones that overthrow a democratically elected government, which was Yanukovych government at that time. It was uh, legal and it was uh, uh, recognized and it was democratically elected. That was overthrown with a bloody coup organized with outside help. So those people who organize it from within Ukraine, those are called traitors. Like you would call them here in the United States, in France, in Germany, the same way. If you have domestic people uh, who organize an overthrow of a legitimate democratically elected government with the support of other countries' uh, departments and uh, you know institutions, uh, that would be called you know coup and then you would be a traitor. And uh, look how traitors are treated by any country. Now that's one thing. So after that, that's what happened over there. So history doesn't start where these guys are saying it started, okay? Remember, the new government, it was formed by those people who overthrew the government, which I think they're traitors, right? Uh, they were recognized by the democratic countries. So the democratic countries, some of them were involved in this, immediately recognized the new government who took control. And they tell us that they like freedom and, and democracy. So the democratic countries had no problem with an overthrow of a legitimate democratically elected government and recognized the guys who overthrew it not by democratic vote, by action with pop, pop, pop. So yeah, okay, thank you. When I see that, I, uh, I will shed some tears for uh, these people, okay? Now, since its invasion right here, Russia has seized more of most of Luhansk, uh, but about half of Donetsk remains under Ukraine's control. Taking control of the town would potentially allow Russian forces to cut supply lines to Ukrainian forces in Bakhmut. You said it's not important. Now it is. Though the strength of Ukraine's new defense positions was not known. Okay, well, uh, the, now it's important, huh? So uh, the Institute of Study of War, a think tank in Washington, said earlier this month that the fall of Solidar wouldn't mark and I'm quoting, an operationally, operationally significant development and is unlikely to uh, presage an imminent Russian encirclement of Bakhmut, end quote. Uh, this think tank, uh, just so you know, guys, is not a think tank. It's something else. Uh, I liked it at the beginning, but then I realized it's just uh, on a really... No, no. The Institute said Russian information operations have and I'm quoting, over-exaggerated the importance of Soledar, end quote, and you over-minimize them, which is a small statement. It also urged that the long and difficult battle has, argued that the long and difficult battle has contributed to the exhaustion of Russian forces. Perhaps more worry for, worrying for Moscow, Western military helped for you, help for Ukraine is now being stepped up with the delivery of tanks. Good. Elsewhere, Russian forces have continued to pummel Ukrainian areas, especially in the south and east. Russian strikes wounded 10 civilians, blah, 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 tra-la-la. -la. So Russian forces are con concentrating their efforts on establishing control over Donetsk province, conducting offensive operations around the embattled cities of Bakhmut, Liman and Avdivka and the village of Novopavlivka, according to spokesperson Oleksandr Stupun. So, we are there. In addition to Donetsk, the Russian attacks struck settlements and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, it seems like the Russians are not, uh, you know, uh, losing here. They conduct uh, offensive operations and uh, um, Domba in Donbass will, uh, Donbass will uh, be claimed by the Russians. I'm, uh, how should I say, I'm foreseeing that.
So they retreated, organized, disciplined, and good for them. They saved lives. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.